the Sigma FP camera can serve as a webcam. Out of the box, no app is required. Let's check it out. The Cinema 5D Virtual Show is brought to you by b &H, the professional source for all your video needs. CVP, the leading specialist in creative cine, video and photo solutions. Tilter, arm your camera. Nanlite, professional lighting solution. And Manfrotto, imagine more. Hi, I'm Johnny from Cinema 5D and welcome to our virtual show. Today I'm with Brian from Sigma US. Brian, how are you? I'm doing great, Johnny. How are you doing? I'm really fine. Our virtual show is really doing great and I'm happy to talk to you today about the Sigma FP camera as a webcam. But before we dive into this little feature, let's remind the people a little bit about this little marvel. What's, what's are the strength of the Sigma FP camera? So first off, it's a full frame camera that'll fit in my hand. It's a you know, small, lightweight, very, very modular in design, but within this little camera, it packs a punch. Um, it, it'll do 12-bit Cinema DNG RAW just to like a little solid state drive. So when, in this small little guy, you have a full frame camera with a full sensor readout giving you raw video. Um, there's nothing really on the market like it. There's other cameras that'll do raw, but they're, they all have like a smaller sensor. There's no fan inside. Um, it's passively cooled. The technology and the, the design to make that happen is just pretty stunning to me, so. Let's also not forget that it's a great stills camera. It is. Um, it's actually my favorite camera. It's, so the size of it, it comes with a 45 millimeter 2.8 lens. It's nice and lightweight. The optics are great. So when you pair those two together, it's just this great small camera you can pretty much take anywhere with you. If you want to throw on a bigger lens or something like that, it, it's definitely there for you. But just this small, great camera, you know, it sits out on my counter all the time. It's always at hand to take out with me to throw in the car, um, go in the park. It's, it's just such a great little, little piece, you know. It can be as big as a cinema camera and small as a little photo camera. Let's refer it as a nice small brain. And when I say brain, I mean, uh, I really like that I can enhance it with uh, your own accessories, which, mean, which means uh, not to rely on a third party accessories. You have almost everything from a viewfinder to a kind of a rig. And it's, it's very, how do you say in English? Customiz customized or customable? Customizable, it was very good, so. <laughs> But I really want to talk about one hidden feature, which is using the FP camera as a webcam. Is this something that was already um, in the spec sheets or this something that was evolved and developed uh, because of the situation? No, so the, in the original firmware release with the camera, if you look at the, if you can pull up, you know, go back in time and you can pull up the, the sheet, there's definitely a little line in there about it being, a video class device, which just means it could be a webcam. Um, I remember being at IBC and talking and talking to the, you know, the brand managers and the designers for it. And they said, oh, totally, it's meant to be a webcam. So the idea that you can, you know, use it as a webcam was always there from the beginning. Um, the current circumstances have kind of accelerated the usage of that and us, us trying to make, make the most of it, but it was definitely there from the beginning, so. Why would someone want to use um, a camera, a full frame sensor camera as a webcam? I mean, the benefit there is just the image quality you're going to get. You know, the little itty bitty sensor inside your laptop or your phone is, it just does an okay job. I mean, they've come a long way, but it's nothing compared to the image quality you can get out of a full frame sensor. And that big sensor can do a lot. So you can also, have a shallower depth of field so your background disappears and you get rid of the clutter in the background. It gives your images just a more professional, more cinematic look. So maybe you're not using it, maybe you're just trying to create a better, you know, I don't wanna say, a better, better feeling and better look and more professional look to your video. It's a very simple and easy way to do it. One of the things that I really like when using the Sigma FP camera as a webcam is the ease of usability. You don't, you don't really need any external software and you don't need anything special in order to use it. Can you please um, run us through 
the connectivity side of the camera from like from the camera to the laptop or computer you need the cable that comes in the box and you need the camera uh, that's a, a usb3 port or a usb-c port on your your device so the, basically the way it works is you plug a usb-c and uh to the camera on the side you plug it into the computer and then on the back of the camera you'll get a menu and it'll ask you if you want to use the camera for mass storage or as a video device um, you select video device, it it shows up. Then when you dig into things like Facebook Live or Zoom, it'll give you the option to select that as a camera and away you go. There's a couple caveats about it all. I mean, there's a there, with, with anything, there's a little, little tweaking to do. Once you plug it in and use it as a video device, you cannot change any settings. So what I recommend is kind of set it up look at it, dial in your settings, you know, where you want your aperture to be and things like that beforehand. So then when you plug it in, it's all ready to go. But in general, it's incredibly simple to use. There's no software you got to use. There's no plug-in to get it to go here, to a capture card to go here. It's, it's, it's as easy as it sounds. Absolutely. And I can witness firsthand that I was, I was amazed with the simplicity. Um, how, how do you actually bypass the issue with focusing because uh, the camera does autofocus, but in those cases, maybe we want to rely on the manual focus and the camera doesn't have any flip screen. What would be your best advice how to use uh, focus? So what I would typically do is I would set my, you know, I would use a larger f-stop than, you know, I wouldn't shoot, you know, wide open at one, two with my beautiful 35 millimeter lens. I wouldn't do that to anybody shooting video at that shallow depth of field, but you know, maybe f5.6 is still going to give you enough to make the background kind of fall off, but it'll keep, you'll keep your eyes and back to your, and so it'll, it'll adjust for a little bit of movement of you talking. Um, what I would typically do is I'll hit auto focus, then I'll flip it to manual focus. And then once it's kind of locked on me, I do, I am, I am, privilege to have some monitors and stuff. So sometimes I will flip a monitor up to see it. Um, but you can also, when you plug it in and you look at it, you can see if you're in focus or not. So I can stare at the screen and just be like this, back and forth and, and focus it. So you can tell if you're out of focus, if you need a little bit more depth of field. That's exactly what I did. Uh, the camera was uh, with a reach of hand and um, yeah, I could easily see myself and then it was very easy to adjust uh, focus. Um, one of the issues that I personally encountered is sometimes there's a drift or unsynced video and audio. Can, can you please let us know if this is really the situation or it was only my, my bad luck? So what I found is that there's a couple couple good settings, good practices to get into to make sure it works well. Um, you do want to be in uh, like a 1080p. Um, you do want to be in an MOV file, and you do want to be at 30p, 30 frames per second. Um, I found that if you're up at like 60 frames per second, it can cause some some video issues, or even if you drop down to 24, you kind of get some of that. One of the other big things is we I have not had really any luck with any other browser besides uh, the Google Chrome browser. Um, and so that that seems to have solved most of the issues I've had. Um, I've mainly used it in Zoom and Facebook though. So um, there might be some other programs out there that have some issues or problems that I don't know about. Yeah, I was uh, using it with Skype and sometimes it was really nice and sometimes I had this issue, but maybe I really should try to use it with, uh, with Zoom. Although we are communicating via Skype and that's why I try to use it uh, uh, with Skype. Good, that sounds very straightforward. And again, I can, I can say I, I was really amazed by the simplicity. Uh, did we forget anything about the camera before we kind of remind the people that the camera, of course, is available and just the price? But did I forget anything which concerns the uh, the Sigma FP as a webcam? I think we hit on the, all the relevant points. You know, if you have one, you want to try it out, kind of maybe go through the settings I set up. If you're interested in, you know, taking it for, uh, you know, trying to get a high quality webcam at a you know, relatively affordable price than like a cinema camera, you know, easy to use, it's, there you go. 
Uh, just let's remind the people how much the camera costs. So in the United States, we're at $28.99 for the body only, uh, $32.99 with a lens, with a 45.28. Brian, thank you very much. It was a real pleasure to talk to you. And guys, thank you very much for uh, watching. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.